Good morning, everybody. My name is Ben Baird. I'm the finished shop manager here at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Uh, this morning, we're out here at 7060 Quarry Road at the facility. Um, as you can see with all the lumber around us here this morning. Um, it's September, unfortunately. Uh, normally, we would be hosting our annual Red, White, and True event. Unfortunately, we uh, are unable to do that this year due to the pandemic COVID-19. But we still wanted to give you guys a little taste of uh, what goes on here and day in and day out and show you the operations. Uh, before we get into that, I want to thank the community and thank all of our customers all over the, the U.S. for supporting us and helping us get through this. Uh, the support has been unbelievable. We had to shut down for two weeks uh, back there in April. And um, I mean, our customers were devastated, which uh, was a real eye opener for us. And we really appreciate all the support and all, all the help through that moment. Um, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to start in the stacker. Um, as we walk through here, I think one of our guys, Rick, is up here waxing the end of uh, the rough lumber that just came in off a truck. I'll have him explain to you guys why he's doing that and kind of the process behind that. Um, so we'll go ahead. We'll start over here and um, I'll show you guys around a little bit. Uh, we're actually celebrating our 60th anniversary uh, this year, which is which is pretty uh, pretty amazing. Beans, my grandfather and his two brothers started the company 60 years ago. Um, kind of started it on a shoestring back uh, behind the house. Um, they were they started up a little rough mill and uh, were doing orders after school. Um, a couple of them had to go off to the military, but that didn't stop them. I mean, they kept right on rolling. Um, and here we are 60 years later, we have an absolutely beautiful facility, um, great employees, great customers. Um, without all those people, we wouldn't be here today. So here Rick is right now, he's actually working on spraying the, the rough lumber that just got delivered here this morning. Um, we'll get with him and we'll discuss why he's doing what he's doing here. How's it going, Rick? Good. This is Rick Dean, guys. Um, how long you been here, Rick? 25 years. So, uh, as we go through here, you guys will be getting introduced to a lot of our guys. Um, you're going to come to find out that a lot of them have been with us a lot of years. Um, like I said earlier, without guys like Rick, without all the employees, nothing here would be possible. So, um, I was telling them a little bit about how you're spraying the ends of the lumber with wax. Um, you want to go ahead and explain to the people why we're doing this and kind of the kind of the point behind it. Yeah, it comes in green, raw, and if we if we would stick it in the kiln without waxing it, the ends would crack in. We'd lose a couple of inch or two off each end. So we spray the wax on it, kind of seals it up, and awesome. helps the waste. So yeah, so like Rick said, he's been here 25 years. I mean, he does an unbelievable job for us. He's uh willing to do whatever we ask. So thank you, Rick, I appreciate it. I'll let you get back to it. Alrighty guys, so here we are. We're gonna go ahead and head into the stacker. Uh, this is where, this is pretty much the first step when we get a new load of lumber in. Um, they're gonna grade it, they're gonna stick it, and then they're gonna put it in the kiln so it can dry. We dry our lumber to about six to eight uh, percent. That ensures that when it gets to your home, reaches the job site and is installed, that it's at the right moisture content and it's not gonna move on you once you have it in your home. So here we are guys, we're in the stacker. Um, as you see here, there's rough bunks of lumber. Uh, these were probably brought in in the last day or so. What's gonna happen is they're gonna come down these chains here and the operator of the stacker is gonna drop them layer by layer. From there, they'll be graded and uh, we'll put them on sticks and you guys will see up here, I'll kinda explain what the purpose of the sticks is. Um, but as we make our way up here, You'll see how they tilt this down. One layer at a time is gonna come off of here. Um, that's so the guy grading can see each board nice and clear and make sure that uh, each board is uh, what we want. Um, from here, it's gonna go down. They're gonna put it on sticks. The purpose of the sticks is so that when it goes into the kiln, the air can move through all the layers of wood equally and ensure that it's all getting dried to the proper content that we're after. Um, so we'll make our way down here and show you guys a little bit uh, of how the process goes. Like I said, this is the first step. Uh, when, when lumber comes in, it's green, it hasn't been dried yet. So these guys are gonna throw them on sticks and then we'll get to the drying process. So this is, this is Zach. Uh, what he's doing here is he's separating the lumber um, into the right size layers. So, uh, he's going to put a certain amount of boards down there and ensure that the layers are all the same width. 
from there, they're gonna drop them down to Nate. Nate's the guy laying six today. Um, both of these guys do an excellent job for us and uh, we're really happy to have them on our team here. So like I was saying, you got your layers here. Um, Nate's down here laying sticks for us. Uh, as you'll see, this will come out, it'll drop on there. And then Nate's gonna put another stick, another layer of sticks down. So each layer of lumber is, is separate. Like I said, that ensures that the air is moving through the lift consistently and all the lumber is getting dried to the proper content. So the next building we're gonna make our way into, guys, is the finish shop. Um, this is kind of where the magic happens. This is where the final product is produced. Um, you're going to see our molders in here. You're going to see uh, how our doors are built, where our doors are built. Um, our butcher blocks are built in here, countertops. Pretty much everything that's a finished product comes out of this building. So let's make our way over here. Um, I'll kind of show you guys what happens. We started out way back in the day making pallets, making picnic tables. Um, as that stuff kind of dwindled out, that's when we got into the molding business. Um, from there, it kind of just took off. We're really fortunate. This is probably the main portion of our business in here. So let's make our way in. I'll show you guys around a little bit. So in this building, guys, we have some of the finest craftsmen in, all across the country, in my opinion. Um, we have people in here that truly care about what they're doing, truly care about the end product. At the end of the day, this just doesn't have Baird's name on it. It has everybody's name on it. And that's something these guys really understand. Um, they really take pride in what they do in here. And without these guys, we wouldn't have what we have. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to grab JR for us. He uh, builds and assembles all of our doors. Um, when I mentioned some of the greatest craftsmen, this guy is probably the best right here. Um, he's second to none. He does an unbelievable job, really cares about what he's doing, really cares about the company, and cares about what the customer thinks about the final product as well. So we'll get him and we'll, we'll talk to him for a minute here. So this is J.R. Seacrest, guys. He's our cabinet shop foreman. Like I said, he uh, builds and assembles all of our doors. J.R., how long have you been here? 15 years. 15 years. So like I mentioned when we were speaking with Rick, a lot of our guys have been here a lot of years. Uh, this gentleman is one of the best at his job. Like I said, he, he's going to be hard to replace when the time comes. J.R., explain to the people a little bit about what you do on a daily basis and why your job is so important. Well, I not only keep track of the orders and make sure we have the supplies that we need. Um, I do a lot of troubleshooting. You know, salesmen have come to me and wanting to know if we can actually build a certain style of door, uh, if even feasible. I hate to say no. Machining doors, uh, boring prepping, um, assembling. So, and that's just kind of like the tip of the iceberg. Tomorrow might be a completely different than today. Tomorrow I might go smooth. I might not have any troubleshooting to do and just be able to come in here and make production move forward. So so that's an awesome thing about JR. You know, I said he builds and assembles doors, but that's not all he does. If I need a mantle built, JR can do it. If I need a tread built, JR can do it. So we really appreciate the guys like JR. They make uh, life a lot easier coming to work and knowing that you have guys that really care. So thank you, JR. I appreciate it. So we'll make our way down here. Um, we'll, we'll talk to one of the guys that operates and sets up the molders. Um, there's a lot of great individuals in here. I wish I could get to all of them, but unfortunately we just don't have the time. Um, as you can see here, these are all door parts on that cart. These are door parts waiting to be made here. Um, so JR assembles the doors, but then he has other guys that get all the parts ready for him. So all these carts right here have door parts on them waiting to be assembled and things like that. There's a lot that goes on in here. So although it may look like just a bunch of wood on a car, all these pieces have a purpose. So next guys, we're gonna go into our grinding room over here. That's where all of our knives are made for our molders. Um, this room is very, very critical. If I don't get a proper grinding or if the knife's off a little bit, uh, it's gonna result in a, in a final product not being cracked. So th this job is very important. Um, you're going to see Roger Ewing in here. He does an unbelievable job for us as well. Um, but as we approach this room, you'll see these are all the cutter heads hanging on the wall here. Um, so whether it be a two knife head, a four knife head, a six knife head, um, the knives are inserted into these heads and then these are put on the molders and this is what cuts the wood when they're going through the molder. So we'll go over here. I'll kind of show you guys what, 
what uh, Roger does on a daily basis here. Um, looks like he's throwing one on right now, so we'll get to see him in action. How you doing, Roger? Not too bad. How are you? Not too bad. So, Roger, how long have you been with the company? I think about five years now. Five years. Five, so, six. yeah, just another example of uh, an awesome employee who really takes pride in what he does. So right now, Roger's setting up to do a double relief. Um, all the double relief is is on the back of your baseboard. Maybe there's going to be two reliefs in the back. That's to just reassure that the stability of the wood isn't going to move and things like that. So he's going to go ahead. He's going to grease the head onto the spindle to ensure that it doesn't move when he's grinding. So we'll go ahead, we'll head back out into the shop here. Um, I'm going to show you guys uh, a molder here quick and show you how that works. Um, we'll head over to Sean's molder. Uh, this, I believe they're on baseboard right now. They're running our stock profile 209. It's going to be a finger jointed prime product when it's done. So we'll go over here and we'll check out this real quick. So it actually looks like they just finished up guys, but as you can see, we have a full lift here. Um, this is B209. It's a finger jointed product. So they take all the scraps here, they join them together uh, and they create a beautiful molding for the inside of your home. So here at Bird Brothers, we're, we're really serious about using all the material and not having any waste. Uh, the finger jointed prime product is just one way that really helps us excel in that. So here we have our sander. Um, as you can see, Anthony's here sanding one by four. Uh, this is a dimensional lumber product. Uh, Anthony does a really good job. So when we run our S4S, we leave it about 20 thou heavy. That allows him to sand 20 thou off of one side to ensure a great uh, face on the final product. So as you guys will see here, um, these guys are planing down what looks to be five quarter maple. Um, this could be used for various of things. Uh, in my opinion, it's probably either going to be butcher block or maybe a uh, arch top casing. The reason I'm saying that is because of the man feeding the planer, Jason Hoops. Um, he builds all of our countertops, all of our workbench tops, and all of our arch casings, and I'm probably forgetting a few things. The man does a lot for us. So I'm going to grab Jason real quick. I'll introduce him to you guys, and he can tell you kind of what he does here for us. So here we are with Jason, guys. Jason, how long have you been here? Ten years. So he's been here quite a long time as well. Um, I was just kind of discussing what you do for the company, but I'll let you put it in your own words, being you're the guy doing it. So what do you do for us here at Baird Brothers? I think all their panels, all their countertops, uh, butcher block, plank tops, and they call the arch top casing, round windows and doors. Anything they ask for. So, like I said, he does a lot for us. Now, what are you planning these for? What are these going to be used for? This is a real thick top. We're going to laminate them together and make a three-inch thick top. So, there you go, guys. Like I said, it's probably going for a countertop. Jason, I appreciate it. Thank you. So, that kind of wraps it up in here, guys. Like I said, this is our finished shop where everything is uh, made from the moldings, the doors, the butcher blocks, uh, the countertops, the workbench tops. So, the next building I'm going to take you guys into is the rough mill. Um, that's kind of the second stage right after the stacker is where this would go. So we'll head out there and we'll talk about that real quick. So as we make our way out here to the rough mill, you're going to see on the left hand side of me uh, what we call our powerhouse. Um, we're fortunate enough to where we produce all of our own electricity, um, create all of our own heat for our buildings and our kilns. Um, there's generators in that room that are powered by natural gas wells that are held here on our property on our farm. Um, those natural gas wells power the generators from there. That powers our plant. Um, it's pretty interesting that uh, many, many years ago, three brothers came up with this idea to produce their own electricity. You'll see behind us here is the, is the silo where we hold all of our, all of our sawdust. Um, we will burn sawdust and burn our scraps to produce heat as well in the winter time. So we're very efficient. Um, we have very little waste. We're actually a very green company. Um, we try to use every piece, every square inch of every board that is brought through the gate. Um, 
and producing our own heat and ener energy is just one way to do that. So we'll go ahead and we'll make our way into the rough mill here. Um, in my opinion, this is by far the coolest, most efficient um, and most technologically advanced building on the, on the facility. Um, you're gonna see when we go through here, there's a lot of automated stuff. Um, unfortunately today, the rough mill is not running, um, but we're still gonna go through, we're gonna discuss some things and uh, I'll kind of show you guys how this works in here. So guys, like I said before, um, the stacker is gonna be the first step when a, a, a load of rough lumber arrives here on site. From there, it's gonna get dried and then it's gonna come out of the dry kiln and it's gonna come into the rough mill where it kind of gets sized uh, and we take the best piece out of each board to create a piece of molding, S4S, a door part, a butcher block, whatever it may be that we're gonna use the lumber for. Um, so the lumber would come down the rollers. Um, it would then come through the planer. When it gets up here, the guy running the control panel is gonna decide what he can do with each board. Um, from there, it's gonna come down the line and go through the rip saw. Uh, they might take, the cool thing about this is, is they might take multiple boards out of one board. So if there's a 10 inch board and there's a knot in the middle of it, they might try to get a one by six and a one by four out of the same board but they're using the entire board. They're not just cutting that knot out and throwing that part away. So as we move down here, you'll see the line comes around. Um, depending on what they're running, they might have a guy marking lumber. Uh, right now they're on poplar, so there's nobody marking lumber. The wood eye is gonna do all that work for them. What the wood eye does is it's pretty much an X-ray for wood. Uh, the wood's gonna go through and the wood eye is gonna read any defect inside that wood. Um, from there, that wood eye is going to tell the crosscut saw what pieces to take out. So if there's a board that has a knot six inches from the end, it's going to know when it, after it comes through the wood eye that the crosscut saw then needs to take that knot out. Um, from there, it's going to go down the line. They're going to pull clear lumber at the end of the line and they'll sort the short blocks here at the front of the line. What they do with the short blocks is they finger join them. When we were over there in the, in the trim shop, I showed you guys the baseboard. Um, they're taking all the little chunks of wood that we can't use for anything else, joining them together, and then we have a beautiful molding at the end of it. So it's really a pretty neat process. Um, like I said, we try to use all the lumber that we can, every square inch of it. Uh, we try not to waste anything. So we're pretty efficient in that part of the business. So guys, here we are, we're in our trim shop. Uh, this building's pretty fascinating. So it's over 200 yards long and it's stocked completely with finished product, ready to be delivered. Um, whether it's our truck, a, a ground order, a freight order, um, going to Canfield, Ohio, or going to California, you know? So everything in this building is ready to be, ready to be sold. It's ready to go. Um, you're gonna see down here is all of our finger joint prime product that we spoke about earlier. Um, Clear down there is flooring where they're gonna count the flooring and stuff, but this is where the guys are gonna pull the truck orders. Um, they're gonna pull freight orders, pull ground orders. Um, so this is really the final stages of, of the whole manufacturing process. So as we make our way, make our way up here, guys, um, you're gonna see the standing bins. Um, everything is real organized. Um, the reason being is if you just throw all the wood in the pile, it's gonna get warped, it's gonna bend. Um, in the wintertime, all these buildings are climate controlled. Um, there's fans that disperse a mist into the air. What that does is it makes sure that the moisture content in the building is at the proper amount and it doesn't let the it doesn't let all the moisture come out of the air from heating the building. Um, so as you can see it's all standing it's nice and neat. Um, we'll get up here and you'll see how our dimensional lumber is stacked. Um, all the markings on the end let the sales guys know how long the board is, what the board is. Um, so all this here is all ready to go. It's all dimensional lumber. Um, if, if you buy a piece of lumber from us, whether it's dimensional lumber, casing, baseboard, um, if you buy it now and then need another piece 10 years later, it's gonna be the exact same thing. Um, our, our standards here are pretty high for quality and we hold a pretty tight tolerance on our product. So during the COVID pandemic, uh, like I said earlier, we had to shut down for two weeks. Um, we had guys, they wanted to come back to work. Our customers needed us. We had a lot of customers calling, asking how long was this gonna last for? Um, we had to make some adjustments, but at the end we got through it. Um, and that's all in thanks to you guys, the customer 
and our employees. I mean, we have unbelievable employees that were willing to do whatever we asked, whatever the, the local and state officials required us to do. I mean, there were no questions asked. It was just, when can we get back to work and what can we do to help? Um, so part of the procedure that we had to do while our showroom was closed was introduced the uh, call in, uh, you could talk to one of our phone guys or order online. Um, there would be a guy at the front gate, he would direct you to where you needed to go. It was a totally contact free uh, pickup system to ensure your safety and our employees safety. So as we get up here, we're gonna talk to uh, John Seaver. He's actually the gentleman that kind of coordinates and runs Will Call. Um, and he did an unbelievable job during that time. So here we are guys, I uh, already kind of gave you a brief, brief overview on what John Seaver does here for us, but I'm gonna let him kind of explain it being he's the one doing the job. So John, go ahead and tell everybody, I mean, what do you do on a daily basis here? So to keep everyone safe, we just wanna make it available for you guys to just be able to pick up so you don't have to come in, stand in the showroom with a bunch of guys or people in there placing orders. So if you call ahead or you place an order online, give us about two hours, It'll be ready to be picked up. We'll get you in and out and we'll keep you away from the crowds. So like I said, guys, he kind of gave you an overview on how the whole COVID thing has affected us. Um, John's done an unbelievable job. He stepped in. Um, like I said, he didn't, he, there was no pushback as far as the requirements from, from ownership or from the local and state officials. Um, so we really appreciate that, John, and thank you for all that you do for us. So that's gonna kind of wrap it up, guys. I hope you guys really enjoyed the tour. Um, I hope that we see everybody at the 2021 uh, Red, White and True event because this is just a bump in the road. We're gonna continue to have these events. Um, like I said earlier, I really appreciate all the support from the community um, and the customers and the employees. Uh, we couldn't do any of this without you guys. The last 60 years weren't, weren't possible without you. And uh, we're hoping that we have a strong 60 years in front of us. So thank you again. And uh, we hope to see you guys all at the 2021 Red, White and True event.